which started one year after the end of World War I, which was known as Armistice Day, became in the late 1930s what today we call Veterans Day. It is a day when we celebrate veterans past and present who served or died during wartime or peacetime. For years, however, if you read the books, if you saw the newsreels, it was possible to think that black folk never participated in defending the country. The fact of the matter is that since that first shot fired from Lexington Green, Massachusetts in 1775, African Americans have served and died for this country. Over 209,000 blacks joined the Union Army or Navy during the American Civil War. Just under 2,000 African Americans were at D-Day on June 6. The notion of allowing black folks to bear arms has never been a popular thing. But more importantly, the greater issue is that defending the country and full citizenship go hand in hand. If an individual is willing to lay his life down for the country, you cannot deny that individual full citizenship. And allowing blacks full citizenship has been an ongoing issue in our glorious past. But there's even a lesser told story. African American women served and currently serve in the United States military and the genesis began during World War II. But in order to understand the significance of their contribution, we must look at the years leading up to the conflict. So we have established the fact that blacks have defended the country since the Revolutionary War up through World War I with the 92nd and 93rd Infantry Divisions. Now, in 1925, there was an army report entitled The Use of Negro Manpower in War. Its findings were essentially that, you know, Negroes could move a box from point A to B, but you can't really depend on them to do anything beyond that. Of course, you know, black folks blew that theory right out of the water. And after World War II, blacks began to fight and die in disproportionate numbers. But, um, well, that, that's a different topic for a different time. So black folk were moving towards an opportunity to prove themselves once and for all that they were patriotic and that they were willing to fight and if necessary, die for the country. But there's something else that is happening simultaneously. World War II would be a proving ground for women in general in both industry and military. And as a result of their efforts, it created opportunities for them after the war. Women worked overseas during World War I, working as volunteers. The Women's Army Auxiliary Corps was established to work with the Army for the purpose of making available to the national defense the knowledge, skill, and special training of the women of the nation. The bill was introduced in Congress uh, May of 1941. Now, I have to say what was happening to women up until that point was a travesty. You know, we have not always been very kind to women, all women. Now, if black men were not treated well in the military, can you imagine what it must have been like to be a black woman in the military? The Women's Army Auxiliary Corps was established on May 15th, but congressional members didn't take the idea of women serving in the military seriously until after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941. And because of the exemplary efforts of those women up to that point, just over a year later, more legislation was introduced into Congress. And on July 3rd, 1943, the Women's Army Corps was established. Now, Instead of women working with the army, they would now be in the army. It was no longer volunteer for them. And it would afford them better pay, uh, better benefits, and protection equal to that afforded to the men. And yet there is another part of the story. This is not just an opportunity for women. This is an opportunity for black women. Everything rises and falls around leadership. If an organization wants to be successful, 
it had better acquire great individuals at the top who are striving to improve their leadership on a daily basis. Well, in comes Mrs. Mary McLeod Bethune. Now, you know, there's a lot I could say about her, but time will not permit. But let me just say, she started a school for girls and eventually co-founded what we know today as Bethune-Cookman University. In 1935, she started the National Council of Negro Women, which in 2020 celebrated 85 years in existence. I knew that she was a part of President Roosevelt's black cabinet, but what I didn't know is that she was very influential in choosing the other members in that cabinet. Mrs. Bethune also served as the special assistant to the Secretary of War for the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. In the role as special assistant, she was responsible for helping establish a training school and recruiting black women for army training. And let me just tell you, Mrs. Bethune was no fool. She understood the weight of the situation and how important it was for those ladies to, to open doors for the ladies who would come after them. And Mrs. Bethune understood that. And so she handpicks 41 African-American women to be officers in the first officer's training class. 80% of those women had attended college and most of them had experienced as teachers or clerical workers. What was Miss Bethune doing? She was dropping the bomb. She was stacking the deck. There was too much riding on the line and she was not going, she, listen, she wasn't going to leave success to chance. If you want a team to win, you better put the best players on the field, and that's what she did. Some of the African-American women who, who benefited from Mrs. Bethune were the women of the 404th Armed Service Forces Band. It was all female, uh, it was all African-American, and they were all talented musicians. Um, privates, uh, Mary Green, Anna, Mur uh, Anna Morrison, Johnny Murphy and Alice Young were stationed at Fort Devens. Now, when they were recruited, they were promised training and skilled positions. But after they got in, they were relegated to orderly positions and they protested. And they, so folk are like, well, look, you just, just, just going back to doing your job like we, we told you, do what we tell you to do and we'll forget all this. They like, no, they took the court martial and they won. Doe v. Johnson Roundtree, recruited by Mrs. Bethune, she's one of Mrs. Bethune's protégés, served in World War II and went on to become a civil rights activist, an attorney, and an ador uh, she was also an ordained minister in the African American Episcopal Church. Major Charity Adams started in the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps and transitioned to the Women's Army Corps and was the highest ranking black female officer to go overseas. She commanded the 6888 Central Postal Directory Battalion, which uh, went overseas. When they got there, the mail facility was in disarray, and they ended up doing three eight-hour shifts to get the mail to the troops. Now, if you don't think mail is important, listen, you sitting over there, you know, in, in, in Bastogne, and you get it, you're not getting your mail from your family, that's, that's a morale builder. Della Rainey, Della Rainey was a Tuskegee Army nurse. She was the first African-American nurse admitted into the Army Nurse Corps. And she pretty much was over the Tuskegee Army nurses. Those ladies were nurses who worked down in Alabama and later went on to Walter Burrow. Those women are actually considered Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, there were just under 500 black nurses in the Army Nurse Corps during World War II. They needed more, but they just were not willing to bring any, any more um, black nurses in. I guess they had a quota. Now, why is this story important? And I know some people will say, well, it, it's all the same thing. It's all the same history. Why are you separating? Why are you segregating it? Well, I'm going to tell you why this story is particularly important. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, the founder of what we know today as African American History Month, said, if a race has no history, if it has no worthwhile tradition, it becomes a negligible factor in the thought of the world and it stands in danger of being exterminated. Now that's not my word, that's Dr. Woodson's word. There are a lot of young folk out there who need to see themselves in history.
and they need to see themselves making history. General Colin Powell said it this way, given the training, the opportunity, and the purpose, there is nothing that a person cannot accomplish. And just like Mrs. Bethune, we don't leave their success to chance.